Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Today we have another lesson in Mega Goal 6. But before we start the new lesson, let's take an overview of the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we started on page 74 and 75 by discussing the meaning of invented languages. We've talked about the invented languages, when did that start, and what, what are the differences between the, the invented and the natural languages. We've said that we are familiar with the natural languages, the languages that evolve, emerge and evolve uh, throughout a long period of time. Words come and words, other words go. This is the natural language. But Zamenhof, as we can see, his picture on, on the slide, has created an invented language that he aims that this language will unify people, will bring people together. We've discussed also the differences between the invented language and the natural language in terms of the belong, how, how, be, how people belong to that language and how people or how the language or is the language going to survive throughout a long time of uh, throughout a long time or not and we've also read the we've asked you about your opinion if that's going to happen or not if the invented language is going to be a successful or not and we also uh, found out about the point of view of the author this is the, uh, these are the questions that we asked before we start the previous lesson. The meaning, the invented language, do you have any idea about the invented language and so on? And your opinion, is it going to be a successful step to invent a language or not? After that, we did the essay together. We discussed the techniques of reading. Then we went to the after reading part where we read all the questions. We started with the first one where we discussed the proper way or the right steps to find the answer for each one of these questions. We've said that we should start with identifying the key words in the first question. After we underline them, we go back to the essay and start scanning for these words. For example, we have reasons and created invented languages. These are the, uh, the key words. So to find the answer, we should put these words in mind and go back, scan throughout the essay to find these words and to see if we can get the answer or not. And we also did the same with the rest of the questions. Today we have a writing question, the tenth part in this unit. In this part, express yourself. We are going to learn or this or the whole of this unit is revolving around expressing our own ideas, thoughts, opinions toward many different things. One of the things that we are going to express our opinions about is the English language. Today we are going to focus on the English language as an international language. Okay, we are going to read an essay together, but before we start reading the essay, let's take a look at the questions before this essay. We have four questions. Why do so many people learn English? What are some of the main purposes? Number two, how important is it to have a good accent in English? Please define good, good accent. Number three, how easy is it for you to understand different speakers of English? Justify your answer. And number four is a step that we are going to go through after we read the text together. But let's go back to the first three questions. These are questions about your opinion. So we don't we have we, we shouldn't have or or the answers are not going to be a true or false answers. 
because we are asking about op your opinions. You see something, we see another. So it's just a matter of opinions. There are, there are no right and wrong opinions. Before we start reading these questions, I want you to read, or before we start read the essay, I want you to read the questions and try to reflect upon this idea, good accent, and how do you understand people who speak English in many different accents? And how do you define the word good accent? Okay? And before that, I want you to think about the importance of the English language. Why do you try to learn English? Why do most people learn English? Each one of us has his own or her own purposes and reasons. So I want you to take some time, think about these questions. You can write the answers if you want. And after that, go back to read the text with us. We have today an essay about English as an international language. On this part, before we start, I want you to pick up your pen and listen carefully. Underline if you find any difficult word so you can translate later or listen to the explanation of that word. Then after that, we will go back and discuss what we have read together. Page 76. 10. Writing. English as an international language. In language learning, most people believe that a native speaker-like accent is an asset that can be used to impress people. The question, however, is which variety of English? The language spoken by people in the North is different from the variety spoken by people in the South. And this only touches upon the two ends of the continuum. There is a multitude of regional varieties within. So, maybe, the first thing to consider is the reason why we learn the language and what we intend to do with it. Is it important for a learner of English to imitate one or more varieties when speaking? No, not necessarily, although people who learn the language in its natural setting tend to adopt regional features in terms of pronunciation, vocabulary, and grammar. What is more useful is developing the ability to understand different speakers, including speakers of other languages, as a primary need. As more and more people use English as a common medium to communicate with people from other countries, they affect the language and develop their own variety in terms of accent, vocabulary, and other features. So much so that special language courses are offered for native speakers who need to conduct business with people in different countries. So, for a change, native speakers have to attend courses that will familiarize them with new varieties of their language and help them develop the skills required to understand the people they communicate with. Naturally, intercultural communication and its requirements are a very important part of such courses and a prerequisite for successful communication with members of different cultures. English as an international medium of communication is an evolving variety that is affected by the speakers of the language, whether they happen to be native or non-native. Therefore, our idea of a good user of the language has to be modified to accommodate characteristics that make one an effective communicator across cultures over and above acquiring a prestigious native speaker accent and structurally accurate use of the language. If culture-specific variations will eventually be looked upon as varieties of the international medium remains to be seen. 
The fact, however, is that English is no longer the property of the English-speaking countries, but of the whole world, and as such, it will inevitably reflect the culture and norms of different people. Okay, now after we have listened to this essay, where the author is trying to shed the light on the different accents or the different varieties of English. Now, what is the purpose or what is the, the thing that we can learn from this essay? From this essay, we can learn how to introduce a new idea and also how to compare between two things and how to assess an idea. Here in the essay, the author wanted to talk about the differences between the accents and how important is it to have a variety or uh, and how some English speaker learn to communicate with, the, uh, with other people who speak English as a second or as a foreign language and learn to understand the people who speak the language as a second language. We will have another example that will help you more to understand this way or this form of writing essays. But now let's go a step to the pack and answer the questions that we've read together. On number four, read the text and find out. We have five points. How important is it or how important is accent according to the writer. We've read the say together. They say together. How do you think that the, the accent is important to the writer? Does she see the accent as an important thing, something that you can't speak English without having an accent or not? The author believes that not as important as many people think, at least not as important in speaking as it is in listening. So the author believes that it's okay to have a different accent. You can speak accent the way you, you speak, or sorry, the, you can speak English the way you speak without trying to imitate any variety or accent. But the most important thing is, to, is that you try to familiarize yourself with listening to different varieties. Number two, what should the learner develop to enhance understanding of spoken language? The writer feels that it's important for learners to be able to understand different speakers of the language. Number three, why do native speakers of English attend courses in English for international communication? They are native speakers, so why do they have to attend courses in English? in order to become familiar with international varieties of English spoken by people of different nationalities. This is necessary for them to communicate with the speakers of other languages in order to conduct business or socialize. Number four, why are features of intercultural communication important? Because they are a prerequisite of a successful communication with members of different cultures. On the, next side, on the next page, we have part B. On part B, we have a task here. You are asked to compare your first language with English. How is it similar? This is the first thing. How is it different? Number two, compare things like pronunciation, grammar, and expressiveness of the language. Make notes on your ideas in your notebook. Okay. We have an example that, we c that can be beneficial for you. It's important for you to read the next example that we are going to read. It is comparing the French or learning French with English. So we have an experience that could help you write your own essay.
you will write your own essay writing or comparing between the English and Arabic. Arabic is your first language and you are learning English. I want you to or I want you on this essay to, to compare between the two languages in terms of the mentioned criteria. The first one is how are they similar? How are they different? You can compare things like pronunciation, grammar, expressiveness of language and so on. Now let's go ahead and read the next email together. We are going to focus on more than one thing. The first one is who is writing? What is the name of the person? And why are they writing? What is the purpose behind writing that email? How do they start the email? And how do they end the email? It is very important for you before you start writing anything to understand and to put in your mind the proper way to start and the proper way to end your essay. Sometimes you have a knowledge about the content that you want to write about, but you don't know how to start and it is also very important to know how to end what you have written. So in the following email we are going to read together so we can understand how to start, how to end and how to do the comparison between the two languages. And I also want you to focus on any interesting features typical of an email to a friend and what are they. Now we have an email from Jose to Badria. So the receiver is Badria and the sender is Jose. We will start reading the email together and you can annotate. Annotate is, or the word annotate means commenting on what you have read. So if you write anything or any comment about something you are reading, this is called annotation. So you can annotate if necessary. On the first paraphrase, uh, sorry, in the first paragraph, how are you doing? Did you have a good summer? How is school? I guess you have just started again, right? Well, that's life for all of us. So in the first paragraph, the sender is just asking about that person. How are you doing and so on. You can ask about general things in their lives. You can ask them about the school. You can ask about the weather and so on. After that, in the second paragraph, this is my first week back at high school. It has been an exciting week. I've made a lot, I've made lots of new friends and we have a new French teacher, Miss Brown. She is a great teacher, but I must admit that I'm finding fresh French very difficult. Okay, in the, in the second paragraph, the sender started talking about the topic that he or she wants to discuss. Okay, she started talking about how English, how she is started studying English and her opinion toward the English language, that the English, is, or sorry, the French is very difficult. In the third paragraph, she is going to explain why the French is very difficult. There are so many grammar rules to learn. This is the first thing. There are so many grammar rules to learn. I thought I knew them all and then Miss Brown gives us another one. I can't keep up and there are many new words which I can't pronounce properly. But Miss Brown says that it's okay if I don't say them perfectly just as long as people can understand me. She told me that what's important is that I try to communicate. Okay, so now she expressed her thought, her opinion toward the French language 
and the difficulties she has faced while she was learning French and how the teacher respond to uh, her struggle with the learning the French. After that, that made me feel a bit bitter. But I still think fresh French is much harder than English. Now, she is comparing English with French. Okay. I still think French is much harder than English. English has lots more words, but the grammar is so easy in comparison. This is the first thing she is comparing. She is comparing the grammar of English and French. Oh well, I must keep trying hard to learn French, I suppose, and one day I will be able to speak as well as you. Guess what? My parents have given me the permission to come and stay with you during the school holidays. Isn't that cool? We should chat soon and make plans. Well, time to go and study my French homework. I've attached a photo of me uh, within my summer vacation. Do you have any photos from your summer vacation? Well, bye for now and send me all your news soon. Your friend, Jose. At the end of, of the email, she has started saying goodbye and telling the other person about the latest news and so on. So this is the way that you can, or this is, or these are the steps that you can follow to write your own email about a comparison between Arabic and English. You can start with talking or giving an overview or asking about the other person. After that, give an overview of your opinion toward that language, the English language. Then after that, start comparing between Arabic and English. What are the differences? What are the similarities? Then after that, you can end your email the way uh, you feel is more suitable. So, you can use this chart, you can draw this chart in your book and use the criteria we have here, the grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary, spoken language or written language, expressiveness, feelings, ideas, attitude, expressing thoughts, appropriacy, how to address seniors, friends, siblings, classmates and others. All these are criteria that you can compare while you compare between Arabic and English. You can write about the similarities or the differences between Arabic and English, and English in terms of these criteria. On the writing corner, we have some advices that could help you writing your own essay. Firstly, when you write an email to a friend, greet and sign your letter in an informal manner. Informal manner, in a casual way, because you are writing to your friend, so it doesn't have to be a formal way. For example, hi, hello, dear, plus first name and best or best wishes or see you soon, take care, plus your first name. Number two, write as if you were speaking to him or to her. So don't use a casual way, an academic or a formal way of writing. Just write as you speak. For example, or that is, use contradicted forms, emoticons or abbreviations. When you want to compare two or more entities, number one, identify different aspects or components of the entities that you want or that you are comparing, for example, language, compare between the spoken versus written language, varieties and speakers, appropriateness, that is formal or informal language, vocabulary, like word, phrases, expressions, idioms, etc. Number two, if you are not sure, look up the topic or entities that you are required to compare and find out which parts 
they consist of. Then choose the part or aspects that you want to focus on. So in the previous page, we've all locked on the chart where there are many criteria that you can pick one or two of them and compare between Arabic and, Eng and English in terms of these criteria. The last part is think of examples and consider similarities and differences. For example, with languages, think of a situation and consider what people might want to convey to each other and what kind of language they would use. For example, two students are talking about a football game they watched the previous evening. They are running over an incident in the game and arguing whether the referee was right or wrong in different cases. Each student supports a different team. Now let's go to the workbook. In the workbook on page 54, we have an exercise M. On exercise M, we have an additional exercise that you can, so you can practice what you have learned more. We have another task for you on this page. Write an informational essay about the origins and use of your native language. In the previous part, you have learned how to compare between two languages. Now in this part, we want you to write an informative essay to give an overview of your own native language. Before you write, research the language. So don't start writing depending on the knowledge you have. Start researching the language to answer the following questions. Where was the language first spoken? So we're talking about a place. Where is it spoken now? How many people around the world speak it? Is this number increasing or decreasing? And why? Are there any dialects? And how are they different from the dialect you speak? Dialect means an accent or the way or a variety, the way you speak. So, for example, in Saudi Arabia, people speak or we have more than one dialect. In every region, people speak in one way or another. Uh, Use the chart below to record information and organize your ideas. So we have after that a chart here where we have five uh, criteria. The first one is origin or roots. Where is it spoken? How many people speak? Is the number of people who speak, who speak it increasing or decreasing and why? Are there any dialects? You can use this chart as an outlining uh, or uh, a tool that helps you outline what's in your mind. After you finish, the ideas will be clearer for you and you can start writing your essay in this page. This is the last part of our lesson today. Thank you all for attending and I wish you enjoy the rest of the day. Salaam alaikum.